All right, today I'm covering someone, one of my all-time favorites. Um, I think you guys will be really excited to see this stuff. If you're not familiar, um, I'm going to be covering Marty. Usually he goes by just Marty, but his full name is Marty Riera. It is, and it's quite tricky finding any of his stuff because of that, honestly. So very, very little of his work is released in English. Um, most of it, it you know, he's from Spain and was active around the same time as Raw. Like early, he was actually not in the earlier Raws, but he appeared in the a couple of the volume two Raws. And so I'm, I'm not sure if he wrote these for Raw or these pieces were used elsewhere in another like it maybe uh la vibra vibora la vibora is like the it was the comics anthology magazine that is kind of like uh it was like it's hard to hard to say because they were like they were like almost like heavy metal but alternative it's hard to hard to explain it was alternative comics but it was it was like a Spanish, mostly Spanish artists, and um, man, I'd love to get my hands on some of those. I bet there's some insane stuff, like all these alternative uh, Spanish cartoonists. And it, obviously, you can see right away that this is this guy has like insanely similar style to Charles Burns, um, only in the sense of. Uh, art style really although he's he's far more leaning to like extreme brutal uh political uh he, he he goes all all over i mean a lot of his work really is about corruption and just like just disgusting human nature and vi violence so i'll this is one of the few uh short stories that he has translated at all i think there's one or two more in a couple issues of drawn in quarterly but all this stuff was collected in a spanish book um they collected all his all his uh early anthology works but um just to give you the con the conceit of this one strip right here so it's written very like melodramatically very very charles burnsy in a way um with this like domestic dispute so he uh basically this guy went crazy and um he shot his wife because it's it's he shot his wife um i don't want to you know ruin the story but he shot his wife and he's just he's miserable she she basically she cheated on him and treated him like shit she just didn't care and but uh so he kills her and then he kills himself he tries to kill himself and he, he keeps blowing his <laughs> he like blasts him, he blasts his face off and then he's still alive and he's like fuck blam again he's like still alive just cannot figure out how to die so he pulls out a knife and just starts stabbing himself he can't see anything because he's just like his face is blown to bits and it just keeps not working he just keeps stabbing himself over and over until finally and he's still alive and he realizes there's there's a bunch of people around that watch him do this obviously it's not funny but like it's pretty funny i'm sorry uh it's kind of just like a play on brutality anyway um the next thing is i'll show you the other little Thing he did in the uh, raw volume two number three i think that this one is maybe this is two sorry volume two number two and my copies are a little bit wonked but this is another piece i think that this was probably from el vibora originally reality it's like two pieces that it's like, it looks like it's two comics or three different comics, but they all like, um, 
like go into each other in a way like it's hard to explain one's like a, a, a I, I won't go into that i just want i'll just show you them anyway it's beautiful stuff super like some of the uh, the visuals he comes up with, are, they're just so unique, yet like it feels like something that you've kind of seen deep down or like in a dream or nightmare. He captures that so fucking well. Thirst for blood. Um, yeah, and those are just two little short strips. I mean, they're great. And um, it's a bummer that like you can't find more. Um, yeah, it really is a bummer, but maybe someday soon these things will make it to an English audience. So then the next thing, let me fix the camera a little bit. Have to adjust properly. Oof, what is this thing? Never mind that. Never mind that. All right, so the cabbie, this is probably, uh, like if you're familiar with Marty at all, this is probably what you know. Um, now this was put out in Fanag by Fanagraphics. Um, I think they put it out later and it was originally published by uh, Catalan uh, communication Communications, isn't that their thing? Anyway, Catalan uh, put it out first in a paperback. And I don't know if that went out of print or why they, why they went to Fanagraphics to reprint it. Um, it's hard to say. I'm trying to get a, a print date on this, but I don't see a title page. Anyway, the, uh, the intro is by Art Spiegelman, which is great. So this, note that this is volume one, and volume two was never published by... It, it was never published in English, at least. Fanographics just dropped the ball. And uh, so, th yeah, he, this is the Art Spiegelman forward. And um, yeah, this is showing that magazine I was talking about. This is, that's what he mainly contributed to. And um, I'm not sure if he ran the cabbie in that. Um, it's really hard to find any information on him, unfortunately, and I don't speak Spanish either, so... May I'm, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. I'll anyway, the conceit of this book is that... Um, Mar Marty was hugely influenced by Dick Tracy and Chester Gold, and the cabbie is essentially, like like a modern version of that um but from his from from marty's mind so it's pretty absurd it's like all the grotesqueness of dick tracy but with this even deeper like like uh there's no hidden political messages in this one like It's pretty, it's almost like a goof on Dick Tracy. It's like making fun of the, fa the fascistic um, undertones and but he flips it in this totally different way where the, you can see that the art is hugely, hugely based in the Chester Gold way of drawing. So I'm just trying to give you guys a deeper, better look. Let me see a little bit more. Yeah, so this is, it's essentially, uh, he's a cab driver, gets instantly caught up in some chaotic mob business, and they kill his, his dad, and they, or not, they don't kill his dad, they like dig his body up, and it's just this complete, they just completely fuck him, and he's, goes from, he's like, He's not just a cabbie. You know that, uh, you know that movie, The Transporter, Jason Statham? <laughs> I feel like they, they jacked that from this. It's pretty much the same thing. It's like a cab driver is fucking... But mostly he's like, event, he's like trying to avenge his family and make sure he's... I'm... 
it's pretty uh, straightforward, but at the same time, um, I haven't read it in a little bit, so I don't want to tell you something wrong, but it's hyper violent. Not necessarily that you see a lot of it, but it's uh, it's like it's it's there and it's implied, and there's a lot of grotesquities. Grotesquities. Um, I don't think that's a word, but there's definitely some grotesque moments. I mean, he he's like the perfect mix of Charles Burns and Chester Gold. This one is just a really fun read, and it, it's it's just a total bummer. Like, what? Every single book that Kim Thompson had planned, like, ready to go, was dropped after he passed. Like, I've always felt so weird about that. Like, I get that maybe these books weren't making much money for Fantagraphics, but, like, dude... Kim Thompson put in the last years of his life working on those projects. I'm sure he wants them to be done. Like, King of the Flies, like, how is that not completed? Like, then he got this. Now, then, the, the uh, like, the cab, the cabbie, like, this isn't completed. Then there's also another uh, Marty story I'll show you next that is just a part one. It was never completed. That was, like, a total drop-off point from Fantagraphics, like, once Kim Thompson passed, it just they just abandoned so many different things. I'm not sure if it's uh, like if it was malicious or they just I don't know. It to me it feels like they just didn't care about like they didn't. Well, I don't understand why they wouldn't honor Kim Thompson's wishes. Like he built that company with y'all. Anyway, I'm like getting off track because every time I talk about that, I get really frustrated which is says more about me than anything <laughs> but yeah once I cover like me the mezzo and Pyrrhus oh man I'm gonna be going in because it's insane Fantagraphics blew it so it is unfortunate that this uh is never continued like in English but I think someday it'll it'll uh, it'll happen because it's been printed in tons of other languages um, and it's been collected as like an integral in Fran in France like <clears throat> they have a full length one I'm not sure how maybe it's double this length or it, it could be even longer but I am desperate to read that one day. I'm, I'm thinking about um, seeking it out. Like I might buy the Integral, Integral and like try to translate it myself, but I don't think I'm that great at it, translating. But I do what I do, I, I try. Look at this sequence, these freaking paint huffers. That part kind of reminds me of a uh, inner city romance, the like psychedelic scene. Interestingly enough, yeah, as you can see, it's just buck wild, <laughs> freak buck wild. And you got Art Spiegelman doing the intro. I mean, clearly he's there for a reason. This book's a banger, so. Someone put out part two, at least. Or just put out a full... I mean, look at that cover, too. You can get this from fucking Fantagraphics still for, like, very cheap. They're constantly having sales, and this is always on them. Also, actually, scratch what I just said. Hit up Copacetic. They have this in their discount section. It's, like, four, like five bucks or something, so... Yeah, help help out um, a local business instead. Not that Fantagraphics doesn't need the money, but <clears throat> I just 
you know, spread the wealth. Sorry, I didn't realize this was still bagged up. This is the next thing that uh, Fantagraphics put out. Um, sorry. From Marty. And this is, this was, like I was saying earlier, um, this was actually supposed to be continued. I'm not sure how many um, volumes, um, but I do believe volume two was made and printed somewhere else because I think it's also in that uh, that Spanish collection that collects all his shorts. So I think that and the part two are in there. Um, but the interesting thing is that they, like Kim Thompson and um, Fanagraphics, they tapped him to make this, uh, this specifically for an American audience. Like it, it, it wasn't supposed to like go back to Spain or anything like that. It was, he was basically writing about an American, it's like Calvario Hills is like a fake American city. Anyway, this is such a freaking beautiful book. Look at that. I, man, rest in peace, Ignatz. Like, this was the best collections, but all of them got drops. Ugh, I gotta stop. Yeah, so this is one of his most <laughs> whacked out. It's not the most whacked out. I'll, it's like, it really is in a way, but like, so much happens in these few pages that you're just going to be begging for more. I can't, I'm not going to give you any uh, real story arc, but it has to do with um, this. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know how to explain it. It's it's too absurd. Like. It's like political, it's like a political thriller, but like, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's like a conspiracy theory type deal with like all this, it's almost David, like Lynchian in a sense, with some really weird looking characters. And then, yeah, see the, uh, that's it. Like, it, that's all of part one. And then part two is actually a, a new cabbie story, which is great. Like, kind of forgot about this. It's just a few pages, but I'll yeah, start at the beginning. But this goes, this shows you where shit's going in part two, like, and it gets wild. There's some, some kind of, like, sci-fi, sci like, weird element going on. The Pope. Look at this. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Such bizarre shit. <clears throat> Look at this, yeah, towards the end. I mean, God, how can they freaking... How could they have left this and th like they were like teasing i guess they put this in as a teaser for uh the, the cabbie volume two and i'm fucking teased thank you insane all right calvario his it's also actually not just fanographics but uh coconino Coco Nino press I never know how to say that right, sorry. Um, and I'm gonna show you the full collection of all his shorts, essentially. All right, so Atajos, I think that's how it's pronounced. Atahos, Ata I'm probably saying that like an idiot. Um, 
I think it mean means like holes or mazes. I don't remember. Not mazes. Shoot. Whatever. <laughs> so this basically documents all his early work that I assume was appearing in El Vibora mostly, but also some of the stuff appeared in uh, like the raw magazines that I showed you and then also in a couple issues of Drawn and Quarterly when that was an uh, uh, when that was an anthology series. So this first piece is like basically uh, an homage to Eraserhead. Um, I don't speak Spanish so I literally can't read these and I've been wanting to read them for years now. And I had to buy this just because I wanted to like see it. I'm trying to get someone, trying to hire some, someone who will just like translate it or sit down with me to read it. I've got quite a few foreign books honestly that I, I mostly because um, of the fanographics thing like them dropping all those books like I always buy the third books like even in their foreign language because I'm not I'm not gonna like miss out I'm gonna freaking translate that shit eventually if no one else is gonna do it then I'm gonna do it yeah there's some really amazing shit here like it's total like Charles Burns 80s style in just art wise and then it does have a little bit of that same absurdity but i think he pushes it even further there's the repulsion <clears throat> that's a way better view of it sorry i should have just showed this man it looks so much better at that size that's such a brutal one there's some great ones in here though like I can obviously tell the, what the concepts are, but this is the one that we were looking at in other raw. Beautiful. I mean, he's so stylized, like. How is this not popular as fuck? Like, I could see this being huge in America. Even like the the few stories that I've that I've read are incredible, and they work so well to like an English speaker. Like, you don't the culture doesn't like. There's no culture loss here. Like, these are made for like today's times, in my opinion. These could come out and just totally work. Like. You don't, the, there's no time context that's like holding this back. The only thing holding it back is language. Well. Terrorista. Yeah, I wish I could, like, give you a better, uh, <clears throat> explanation on some of these stories, but, um, I'm just gonna, I don't have that information, really, so, I'm just on the, along for the ride right now. This is the, uh, obviously, the Calvario Hills that I was showing you before, <clears throat> and... You know, that was the end of that one. So then this is, I guess, part two. Right? Because that was the last... Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know, that's weird. Very weird. <clears throat> Baby killer? Fuck. That's in English for some reason. I mean, look at that style. It's like, totally unique. Stylistically, he's like unprecedented. 
I know a lot of people would just be like, oh, that's a Charles Burns ripoff, but really? Not at all, buddy. Maybe Charles Burns looked at this and took something from it, but this is like a fully fledged style. I mean, Charles Burns always draws things the same way. I mean, as much as I love him, that, look at this, like, look at the, the, the sheer, like, <clears throat> like, form changing in each, just from panel to panel, like, the way he tells a story is like a director or something. His framing, his, his use of shadow, like, and the stories are mind fucks. The ones that I've been able to, to kind of understand or the ones that I've been able to read. I mean, what is going on right now? They're putting a fucking eel in his ass. And then now it's coming out of him. That's what's up. There you go. There you go. Oh shit, he's got something tied to his shalong, a rock. That's, wow. Yeah, like I was saying, this stuff is, is buck wild. It's freak buck wild. Marty. I swear to God, I'm gonna help get this shit out one day. By God, I will. This is a very uh, Dick Tracy looking style one. Actually, this might be a uh, cabbie story. No, no, this is this is actually one of his, his earlier ones. Monstrous Modernos, Modern Monsters. That's Ata that's Atahos. <laughs> and you can uh, still get this. Yeah, El Vibora. So I guess all these stories were from El Vibora. But you can still get this from uh, La, Cup La Cupula. I don't know how to say the mm, name either. La Cupula. La, Cup La Cupula. La Cupula. I'm not sure. La Cupula. Fuck it. You know how it's spelled. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm being a goof today. Fuck. I hope this is like actually entertaining. Um, all right, and then this is the last thing here. This is actually a graphic novel that uh, that Marty wrote and drew and everything. And this was in the er late or early '80s. I can't. I'm not sure what year it was written. Um, but this is the f uh, Cornelius, the French publisher. They did a reprint, a reissue, and with this beautiful like book design it's great it's super oversized anyway let's give her a flip through this is like a this book could really work today i mean it's literally it's about like gender bending and about transsexuality and drugs and it's pretty fucking in line with modern times and i know fanographics was looking at this book for a while and they, they were supposed to actually uh publish it 
but they dropped the ball again, sadly. Now, <clears throat> I have hope that this this will be this will be collected and come out in English at some point. I mean, there's no way. This is by far my favorite work from him, even though I haven't been able to read it. Because it's even harder to read, it's in French, like, fuck. I am not good at that at all. But just look how inventive this is, like, it's so unique. my knowledge, this is all that Marty has done. Um, I know he did a little short mini comic uh, with some, with a small publisher in uh, Spain, maybe last year called LSD. But uh, I was nowhere, I wasn't able to find a copy of that. But they're the ones who, that publisher is the one who put me in touch with the cupola. <clears throat> yeah, the Cupola is an awesome, awesome uh, publisher. One of the best. They're probably like the fanographics of fucking Spain, if that's comparable. I mean, look at this stuff. It's like some QAnon, like, <laughs> conspiracy theorist shit. They're trying to turn the fucking frogs guy. I mean, this is fun to read, even when you don't know the words, to be honest, but I would much prefer a chance to read it. He has, he's not active at all anymore, but I know he's still alive. Um, and I'm not sure how interested he is in, like, trying to get stuff out. Like, getting this stuff to the English audience, but... I got some ideas. I'm, try, I'm gonna try to freaking make something happen. No promises, but... I apologize, this isn't my most exciting video because it's more just showing art and I can't really explain what we're looking at other than holy fuck. <laughs> That's it. That's Dr. Vertigo. So. These are their other, some of their other collection from Cornelius. Love that. I mean, that looks straight up like Charles Burns right there. It's, it's, what? How is that not Charles Burns? Come on. That's, that's a bit crazy. That literally looks like the thing from like, uh, Illbred. I really don't know, like, who is inspired by who? That's a really good question, like, I'm not even sure if they saw each other's work. They must have, because they're both in Raw. But it would be cool to, like... Uh, I'm sure this would never happen, but... In a dream, if I could get them, like, an interview with both of them, that would be cool. Anyway, that's all I have to show for now. Um, I hope you freaking are able to seek out some ca some of this stuff and enjoy it. Like at least get the cabbie and Calvario Hills. They're both super cheap and easy to find. Like you can find these raws too, also for really low sometimes. So anyway, 
hope you like this video. I'm sure not many people are going to watch this because they don't know who Marty is, but hopefully you're willing to, th hopefully some people are willing to take a risk and fucking learn something new. Anyway, bye.